Today is Thursday, so we talk about success for Scrum Masters. We've been sharing success stories here on the podcast since 2015, so there's a lot to learn. But uh, wouldn't you like to learn from people with decades of experience? Well, don't worry, we've got you covered. The Scrum Master Toolbox podcast launched Tips from the Trenches, the Scrum Master Edition audiobook. That's version 2 now out. There are 13 audio interviews, 3 hours of audio with Scrum Masters that have decades of experience. We've got Mike Cohn, Linda Rising, Lisa Crispin, Christopher Avery, Emily Weber, myself, your podcast host, Yves Hanul, the editor of the original Tips from the Trenches ebook, also available with the audiobook. Altogether, 13 super experienced Scrum Masters. To learn more, visit bit.ly forward slash audio tips 2. That's bit.ly forward slash a u d i o t i p s and the numeral 2 at the end, all lowercase, all one word. So, one more time, that's bit.ly forward slash audio tips 2 to learn more. And now, on to today's show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday this week with JC Ong. Hi, JC. Welcome back. Hi, Vasco. Hi, everyone. Good to be back. So, JC, on Thursdays, we like to dive into success and what it means for Scrum Masters. And we start with the tool that we most often use to try to seek that successful outcome. That's the retrospective. So do share with us, what's your favorite retrospective format and why? Hmm. My previous favorite one was actually draw me a picture, but however, it has changed. Currently right now, what I enjoy um, using as a retrospective technique or format is called uh, the sailboat retrospective. Um, especially when it comes to... Um, New, when you when dealing with newer teams, right? Um, have, have you heard of the sailboat retrospective, Vasco? I have, but I want to hear from it uh, about it from you. So tell us how you use it. Okay. Um, so normally, um, when it comes to working with newer teams or um, dif- or teams that are new to each other or have been set up or to have been put together, right, I I find the sailboat retrospective to be quite an effective technique. Because um, it kind of it, it brings out some of the lurking um, feelings that the team has been having. Because in the sailboat retrospective, you often have um, what is holding the team back from achieving the goal that we have, and what is actually speeding the team up. So from there, you can kind of sense what exactly are the major impediments that is um, blocking the team when the team is about to get started as a new team. And the sailboat retrospective is also a good segue into establishing team norms or working agreement as well with the team. So I find this retrospective to be uh, quite useful uh, when dealing with newer teams. So this is something that I think um, perhaps other scrum masters could also try to to could also try it out when it comes to um, facilitating a retrospective with new teams. Absolutely. We'll put the link to uh, one description of the sailboat retrospective. There's been uh, several perspectives on how to host this retrospective here on the podcast. But you said one thing that is uh, slightly different from what we've heard before, which is to use the sailboat retrospective as also a segue or an introduction to defining working agreements with the team. So how do you do that? How do you link the sailboat retrospective with working agreements? Yep. So, so for the sailboat retrospective, we typically discuss about what are the things that is uh, pushing the team forward and what are some of the things that is holding the, the team back and perhaps rocks as well that is at the bottom of the ocean. So these are, these are information that um, the team can use um, to set up um, working agreements as well. For example, um, a very common um, slowing down um, factor that I hear a lot is when the user stories are always changing, the requirements are always changing, um, and perhaps the, the design screens are also not ready when the sprint is, uh, has started. So that those kind of information is useful when it comes to establishing um, team norms or working agreement with the team. So this can also overlap with the definition of done and definition of ready as well uh, for the team. So when you hear these kind of things, then it can somehow uh, contribute to 
defining, okay, how can we work better together as a team than in the next sprint? What are the criteria uh, that the story needs to meet before a sprint starts? So, yeah, so, so things like this can be helpful. To, to segue, depending on what you get in the sailboat retrospective, actually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But that's that's actually a great point, right? Because some of those obstacles or anchors uh, or the rocks, as you said, uh, they can become uh, point discussions or discussion points for the team to improve the way they work and, of course, affect or shape the working agreements. Yep, yep. All right, so now we turn our attention to Scrum Masters and your particular definition of success. So, JC, share with us, what's your definition for a successful outcome of the Scrum Masters work? Hmm. I, 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 I feel that um, a Scrum Masters work is never, ever like finished, in my opinion. There, there may be ups and downs where, um, as a Scrum Master, you do not, need to engage that much with the team but there are also moments when you need to somehow go back and perhaps um, bring the team up again so it's, it's quite hard for me to define success um, but I feel that perhaps the, the must-have criteria of, uh, of a successful scrum master would be when the, when the team really understands um, the purpose and the reason why we are doing certain things in Scrum. So, for example, why do we have the daily stand-ups? Why is the sprint planning there? Um, why do we need to have sprint reviews and sprint retrospectives as well? Um, why is the product uh, backlog refinement useful? So, so these, so the understanding of the team when they know why it is needed, um, then I feel that that is that is an indicator where you were able to explain to them the purpose of all this. Because, for example, if, if as a scrum master, you're on sick leave, unfortunately, the team, understanding the reason for all this, they will naturally step up and say, hey, hey, let's call for sprint planning. Hey, why, why not we have a retrospective next week instead? So they would be self-organized to call for these kind of uh, scrum events, even without you, because they really understand the purpose of it. So that is uh, one success criteria, I feel. Another one would be when, when you notice there is a change of behavior in the team, in a positive manner, of course, um, where they strive for continuous improvement, such as how can the stories be defined in a better manner? How can the UI, UX be, be more seamless in, in the product development? How can the developers also code better? And how can the testing be done in a better manner? So when the team challenges each other to be better, because as a team, you level up together, right? It's not like, hey, testing. I mean, hey, testing is really bad. So, so the focus is only on testing. I don't think it should be that way because as a team, if, there's always room for improvement, right? So when the team is at such a stage where they critically challenge each other to improve, I feel that, yeah, that, that, is, that is the sign of a high-performing team, right? I, I love what you said about the team. As a team, you level up together, and that that reminds me that uh, um, you know some some things that are implicit, but sometimes it's it's worth making them explicit. Is that when we are engaged as scrum masters, uh, the focus should be on having the team improve, not necessarily every team member. And this may be controversial because sometimes for some team members to step up, to help the team level up as a team, other team members need to sacrifice. They need to step down and they need to help the others. And you just mentioned one example that is actually quite common, which is that, you know, stories are left to the last day in the sprint to be tested. And then at the end of the sprint, the testers are struggling and scrambling to get everything tested. And, and, and of course, often they can't. Right, and you, you can't level up as a team if all you try to do is working is work with the testers to improve because the the problem is created by the way we do the rest of the work. Yes. Yep. Yep. You're you're very very right in this. So always um, look at the process and see which areas are potential causes for the bottleneck for the testing, for example, to be on the last day of the sprint. Something definitely can be improved in the earlier stages of the process. Absolutely. I, I do love that phrase. As a team, you level up together. I'm going to write it and put it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. So so in in the anime, in the sports anime that I watch, um, you 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 see like um the different basketball players or different volleyball players. They really get into fights with each other, um, but in reality, they are trying to challenge each other as well to be bet to be a better um striker or to be a better spiker as well. So so is in is inspired by team sports actually. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's actually one analogy that uh, I've I've been using a lot lately, the idea of team sports and how teams fail and of course succeed together, right? Mm-hmm. That's a, a great story. Thank you for sharing that, JC. You're welcome. Part of a successful scrum master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.